Hangout on Air is live and welcome. Good morning, good day, good evening, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are in the world. Bienvenue, uh, willkommen, ciao, uh, josan, ni hao, and hello. <laughs> Man of mystery. Here I am, it is 007 and I thought, uh, have a bit of fun, do a little bit of a Bond theme. Now, I don't think any viewers are in just yet. And comments today, I think, will be brought to us via YouTuber and Google+, Plus. perhaps the comment tracker a little bit. But I do like uh, the way we can bring the Google Plus ones up on the screen. So that's fantastic. <clears throat> Let's see. We're, we're not able to uh, invite huge amounts, so I've had to tweet out and, and, and uh, share the link with people this week. And that doesn't seem to work as well. So let's see if we get viewers in today. If we don't, doesn't matter. It'll go up on the channel and you'll be able to watch it later on. <clears throat> now, I think there's one viewer in the house. We we're just going to check the comment tracker and just see if anybody's commenting. Good morning, two viewers in the house. Good morning and welcome to the Bond, the 007 edition of Steve's Kitchen. <laughs> now, I've had several people saying to me, I actually think I said myself I might make a martini, but it did seem a little bit of a waste of uh, a few minutes to mix up a little bit of vodka, lillet, uh, gin, and a twist of lemon. But I have uh, entered the spirit, got myself a little glass of something here. It is way too early in the morning for me also to be drinking um, uh, vodka martinis. So uh, you forgive me if I'm not going to indulge this morning in a martini. Got to stop walking around, get told off for that. Good morning, three viewers in the house. How are you? Got the old dicky bow on this morning. Now I just have to hope if you want to comment today, by the way, I think you can pretty much comment anywhere, whether you you comment on the YouTube link that I sent out just below the video uh, on the um, Google Plus, also on the comment uh, app, which we may not be using in the future. It doesn't seem to work that well, and I'm, I'm thinking of abandoning it. I hope, I hope everybody has had a fantastic week. We're going to have some fun today uh, making something in the kitchen. I'm actually probably going to fail today because I've put a, a lot of um, uh, a lot of pressure on myself to actually make more than 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 is normally humanly possible in a, in a live show. We're going to be making some fresh bread in the way of English muffins. We're going to be making a nice hollandaise sauce. We're going to be poaching an egg. I am actually going to be making uh, eggs royale. <laughs> I pretty much think that although um, Ian Fleming tended to have Eggs Benedict in uh, most of the books, he said Bond was a, a great lover of Eggs Benedict, I think Bond would probably have ordered Eggs Royale. I think uh, being a, a British spy, he'd probably prefer that. So today I've decided we're going to be doing um, Eggs Royale, nice traditional British style of the Eggs Benedict. Hey, Isaac, welcome. Glad to have you in. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, as I say, and good night, wherever you are. I think I, Isaac, I do know where you are, but I'll probably get it wrong if I say Anna, you're in. Hi, welcome. Anna was the winner of that wonderful competition. I should actually tweet out a picture because I've made some cupcakes, Anna, with your fantastic recipe, and they look fantastic. That video has been filmed, and we were just looking for a slot to put it up. And I know Anna is um, uh, from Leeds, but I know she's returning to Japan. So Anna, you have a wonderful time when you get there. And we'll sort something out about that mixer. I sent you a little message. Hopefully, um, we'll we'll sort something out. Good morning, Anne. Anne to Anna. Good morning, Anne. Yes, I have dressed the part. Got the uh, the dicky bow on. Now, <laughs> I did think I got a nice. Um, shirt on with the uh, the, the nice uh, metal stud buttons on there. I don't mind wearing that for baking, but I'd probably take the jacket off. I think it might be a little bit too much if I end up giving myself a, a dry cleaning bill. But today, as I said, we're going to have some fun 
we're going to be baking fresh. Now, these are really not too difficult to make crumpets. Uh, it's not crumpets. We will do crumpets on the show, by the way. I do love a, a good crumpet. Um, <laughs> that's a very Bond saying. I like a bit of crumpet. Um, we are making muffins. <laughs> English muffins, English style muffins, start to finish. I have uh, got up early this morning and mixed an earlier batch, so I'm letting that prove as we speak. We're also going to be making a very simple hollandaise sauce, a delicious hollandaise sauce that you can knock up in literally minutes, so we won't be hang hanging around. And I'm going to be poaching an egg, which I'm probably going to do on the stove because um, I'll have the little uh, gas cooker here doing the, the muffins. So there are eight people now in the house. Good morning to everybody. Let's have a little look at the Q&A app and just see if anyone's on there. But I'm happy if you're commenting on YouTube this week. I think we're going to stick with those YouTube and Google Plus comments because they seem to work better and I can bring them up on the screen. Good morning. Cheers. Bottoms up. And no, I am not drinking a martini at 10 o'clock in the morning. And by the way, if my postman turns up and I have to go to the door, we are going to be having a right strange look because I'm either turning up in some sort of like loud chef's jacket and today he's going to wonder what am I doing 10 o'clock in the morning in a dinner jacket. <laughs> He'll either think I had a heavy night last night or I just think I'm wacko. I think he thinks I'm wacko anyway. Sorry, there's a bit of paper rustling over there. I'm just going to move it out of the way. So six viewers. Oh, we lost a couple of viewers. Goodbye. <laughs> Maybe they popped in just to say hello. So I don't think, I, I didn't put the ingredients up this week because I don't think it's one that uh, people will be baking along with me. Um, now, as probably uh, one of the topics I should cover was the competition, the giveaway, the, uh, the KitchenAid mixer. I really want to thank everybody personally for getting me up to 50,000. It was a re really great achievement. I'm really happy about that. And um, I, I didn't know what to do, whether to have another competition like I've done in the past where I ask for people to do uh, recipes or, or, or things. But not everybody has the uh, ability. I've had messages before saying it doesn't include everybody. So I wanted to keep it really simple. Uh, I know the KitchenAid mixer is a big prize, and um, but it's just... I could have done a number of smaller prizes, but I think it's nice if somebody gets something big from this. So good luck to everybody. And there are literally hundreds of people entering the competition. So that is great. We will have a raffle coming up to Christmas and somebody will be winning a KitchenAid. So that's going to be heaps of heaps of fun. Now, I wouldn't mind a KitchenAid myself. They're nice, funky colors. Now, I'm not sure which colors we'll be able to get for people if they win. We may have to sort of talk about that later because um, I've got to get it from certain sources and they don't have all the colors. So you may have to, uh, unfortunately, go with a color. Uh, you give me your preferences if you do win. 12 people in the house. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good night. Good day. Bienvenue. Welcome to the show. We're going to be baking bread today. I have got um, muffins. We're going to be using all-purpose flour, not bread flour. That's the beauty of making muffins. You don't need the bread flour because we want the crumb. We want that loose, airy crumb of the muffin. Uh, now, if you've ever had an egg muffin, which I'm sure a lot of you had with those rubberized muffins that they sell there, this is a t completely different experience. Proper English muffins are absolutely delicious, so we are going to give those. Andrea Wanting's in the house. Good morning, Andrea. How are you? Welcome to Steve's Kitchen. Always lovely to have you in. So, Anne, you have me on Google Plus on another tab, but I don't see the comment tracker. No, the comment tracker is something that we, we have this side. It tracks comments from Google Plus and it tracks comments from YouTube, so it kind of draws them in. Uh, you won't see it. I, I, it's the thing I can bring your questions up here. So don't worry about where you, you put your questions in. Hopefully my comment tracker is dragging the questions from different parts of the internet and throwing them up here on the screen for me. Um, moon Moon Girl, welcome to the show. <laughs> I look dashing. I don't feel dashing. It's very early in the morning for me. I feel slightly overdressed <laughs> for a Steve's Kitchen. 
But I thought it'd be a bit of fun. Got some nice cufflinks on this morning, nice dinner. Actually, I do like dressing up like this. It's always nice to, to put a DJ on a little bow tie. Good morning, Fit Ange. Angie, welcome to the show. I'm glad you got in. I knew you said that you would. So uh, welcome to the show, and I can see your comments. Now, I'm going to read this long one on uh, on the screen, but we'll pop it up. But I won't be able to, you won't be able to see it all. Emily, welcome. Uh, you're from Hong Kong, studying in Brisbane. You inspire me. Josan Lihoma, welcome to uh, Steve's Kitchen. You're from Hong Kong. <laughs> You'll be having instant. What part of Hong Kong are you from? Love Hong Kong. Wonderful, wonderful city. Uh, now, it's a long comment, and I'll probably have a little read of that later on because it'll take me ages, but uh, welcome. And you're staying up in Brisbane, lovely part of the world. I used to live up near Brisbane, up on the Sunshine Coast, and I know it's beautiful up there. So you're very lucky. You're probably studying, are you, studying in one of the universities? I'm sure that's uh, mentioned in there somewhere. <laughs> anyway. So, yes, anyone been to Hong Kong, by the way? What a wonderful, I lived there many years, so um, I've lived at many places. People keep saying to me, I'm sure people are starting to wonder whether it's true or not, but I have lived in many parts of the world, and um, I love, love, love traveling. Good morning, Ewan, welcome. Now, Ewan, I uh, saw your comment the other day, and I wasn't sure if it was you that used to play the guitar. Did you used to have the guitar on your channel and play guitar? Was that a different Ewan? Anyway, welcome to the show. Uh, by the way, everybody that has entered the competition, thank you very much. Everybody that's shared and commented, make sure that you're sharing those out to somewhere where I can see them because I do need to be able to see those shares to make sure they're, they're um, uh, publicly shared. And uh, But anyway, I really want to uh, thank you for getting involved and I wish every one of you good luck. Now, what else has been going on this week? We have been we have been cooking. Over on this corner, occasionally you might see hanging up in my kitchen here uh, <laughs> is a depleted guanciale. This is the, um, the pig cheek. We're getting down to the fatty end of the meat here. This, by the way, for those of you who don't like your fat on your meat, this you are really missing out because this is absolutely delicious. And I will be putting up a video in the new year showing you how to make guanciale. I was hoping to put it up sooner, but we've got a lot coming up over Christmas, a bit busy. We're going to put a series up. We're going to be doing Italian pastas as well. I'm going to, I, I've just been filming making a wonderful carbonara with the guanciale. So delicious. If you haven't had a carbonara, um, a proper uh, carbonara made with uh, just the guanciale and the eggs and that, you really are going to be in for a treat. Thank you, Angie. Yes, muffins are great. I, I'm going to be making this batch up. You need an hour or so for the uh, for the bread to rise. But another great little tip, and uh, I might mention it again a little later on, is you can make this very simple dough up uh, before you go to bed. And you can just pop it somewhere cool. It doesn't have to be that warm. Just cover it over, pop it uh, in an area. And when you wake up in the morning, that is going to be beautifully expanded. Uh, nice, light and airy, and you can just knock the air out of it, shake the muffins, and pop them on the griddle. You're going to get fresh muffins in the morning, and, and nothing is nicer than fresh muffins, a little bit of whatever you like, but if you like a poached egg on there, a little bit of smoked salmon, maybe some bacon. And if you want to make a hollandaise sauce as well, I'm going to show you how to make that super, super quick. Hello from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the USA. That's uh, Zelfi uh, Ellison. Hi and welcome. Does that go up on the screen? Now that's in the comment tracker. So that's the thing. When you co comment in the, um, the Q&A app, I can read. Sorry, I'm tapping my microphone there. I can read them, but nobody else can read them. So um, I'm kind of moving away from the Q&A app. We've had a lot of problems with it, but um, huge welcome. Uh, carry on commenting there. I will be reading them, but your questions can't go up on the screen. Oh, 
it's going to be another warm day here in Melbourne. I've already been out for a little walk around. It's looking beautiful. It's crisp and bright out there. We're going to have a hot day. A lot of you are going into your winters. Angie will know uh, we're coming into our summers. We're having some real scorching days at the moment. So that's fantastic. Now, the comments uh, come in, in in batches. So probably I should start and make. Now, I'm not going to do the bread mixing in this jacket. I think I might have to take it off. <laughs> so otherwise, I'm going to have a, a dry cleaning. So shall we start? Does everybody want to start making English muffins? Get the jacket off. OK. Let's get that off. Just give me one second. I'll just pop that over there. I've got to take these um, take these cufflinks off and then roll my sleeves up. Get ready. Actually, I might undo the bow tie. Why not? Gosh, I like I feel like Patricia the stripper now. I'll pop those over there. Roll these uh, sleeves up. Should probably put my Union Jack. Shall I undo the bow tie? Yeah, undo the bow tie. Bow tie coming off. There we go. Proper bow tie, by the way. Not one of those um, fake things. Right, we're down to action now. We need to get, actually, we do need to get our yeast on. I've got a cup of yeast here in a bowl. I'm just going to warm this very quickly in the microwave because I want to activate the yeast. Thirty seconds in the microwave. Oh, does my bowl look big in this? <laughs> Sorry, that's a uh, reference some people will get. Now I have. Um, now I've said before in many videos that um, flour I prefer to whey. I mean, you can use cups of flour. I've been looking at various um, recipes recently that use cups. I find when you use cups, because it can either compact or be loose, that you can have at least 30% discrepancy. So I don't tend to use them. Uh, I would say this is about 300 grams of just all purpose or plain flour. Uh, 300 grams in ounces is seven. No, I, I, I need to check that. Maybe somebody can pop that up on the screen. It's 10 ounces. I should be knowing this by now. So we've got, um, it's about two cups, but uh, cups don't work so well. Trust me, stick with a little, you can get a little set of scales on eBay, $5 maximum. They'll post them to you for free. So it isn't expensive. If you bake a lot, it is worth getting some scales. Now we need some sugar and salt, a teaspoon of each. I'm just going to pop those into my flour. Salt one side, sugar one side, and my yeast, because I'm not sure which was salt or sugar. Oh, no, hang on. We're not going to go with the yeast. We're going to activate it separately. But I am going to put a tablespoon of butter. Now, this is an unsalted butter, and that's why I've added a teaspoon of salt. If you use a salted butter, you might want to add... Um, I'm going to get very messy, so it's a good idea I've taken that jacket off. You might want to add a little less salt if you use salted butter. Let's just pop that down there. I'll rub that butter in to the flour, just like you would with a pastry. Yes, making um, making uh, English muffins, Angie, overnight is the best way to go because quite often you want muffins in the morning. How do you like? Oh, I can't sing. Can't sing. Shouldn't sing. Can't even have any Bond music. YouTube won't let you uh, play any of those sounds. So just mix those dry ingredients. I'm going to get my warm now, hopefully warm. Let's go a little bit longer, make sure it's warm enough to activate that yeast. I am using uh, a teaspoon and a half of instant dry yeast. So if you decide to use a baker's yeast of any sort, you may want to take a little extra time to activate it. Let's pop the yeast there. Just ch check the temperature. That's okay. It shouldn't be too hot, that water. If you can't hold your hands in there, it is too hot. Okay. So you don't want to kill the yeast and you don't want the yeast to be up against the salt. 
you could add your sugar in there actually and it would the yeast eats um carbohydrates so it'll eat the sugar it'll eat the flour and uh let little bubbles out little yeast bottom burps and puff up your uh, your dough to give that lovely airy uh taste you and you're from scotland it's winter there is there snow beautiful i do miss the snow snow hey now Brittany, you're asking about the competition can people enter now i the idea of the competition is it's fair for everybody. I want to I want to let everybody have a chance of entering. No, there won't be multiple entries, but I am sort of saying to people, if you can promote the channel by sharing it three or four times, that would be great. But it's not really about um, now. If I said to people, uh, each time you share, you get a, a another raffle place in in the raffle, uh, I'd be chock a block with uh, irrelevant comments. I, I really just want everybody to have a chance uh, of winning. And um, the reason that I didn't want to just keep it uh, to Australia is because so many viewers, uh, the comments come from all around the world. And it would be so unfair, I think, to not include everybody in this particular uh, raffle. It's going to be a little tricky uh, getting a KitchenAid to some countries, but there are ways. Uh, I mean, I probably have to buy it online from a, from somewhere near if it's a if it's a uh, in the Middle East or somewhere like that. We'll work it out. I'll work it out. I decided whatever I'll work it out, and uh, generally that's the way to go. Set yourself inevitable consequences, and in that way, you'll get things done. There's a little tip for you. So. Ah, he is the boy that played guitar. You and I seem to remember you playing guitar. I thought you were very well. It's very good as well. I think you sing. So uh, good for you, buddy. I'm a, I'm a guitar player. Uh, I was actually going to bring a little Union Jack ukulele and play the Bond theme, and then I suddenly realized that uh, YouTube would probably not approve. Good morning, Tess. Beautiful to have you in the house, in my home here in Melbourne, Australia. Now... A little bit of foam starting to come on the top of that warm water. The yeast is just starting to get activated. I'm going to pour all of that. That's a cup, as I said, a cup of warm water. Just pour that in. Now, if you put your hands in there now, you are going to end up like the cookie monster, covered. Get a fork and just start to bring that together. This is quite a wet dough anyway. So you don't want to uh, make it any harder for yourself. We draw that all together there. Okay. And as it starts to come together, it's going to make it easier. You can do this with a mixer. You could do this with a KitchenAid. <laughs> but when I make bread, I like to do things by hand. And I think if you, if you can just encourage yourself when you're making bread to give this a go by doing it by hand, you get to know whether a dough is too dry, whether a dough is, is too wet. The mixer, the mixer will never give you that experience. I'm gonna take the fork off of there, out of there now, and I'm just pulling the, just very gently, pulling that around, getting the extra dry flour there. Now I do have a little bit of flour in a bowl that I might use. Let's just move these out of the way. I do have a little bit of flour in a bowl which I might use. Um, if this is too wet. It, it is a very sticky dough though. Don't worry about that. And it takes about, and depending on how warm, a lot of you are in the winter now. Angie, you'd be able to make this here now and, and it would rise because the weather is so warm so quickly. 10.58 ounces, and thank you very much. So 300 grams is of flour, all purpose, Plain flour is in here, and that is about 10 and a half ounces. Now, I bring my dough out onto the counter, and I can feel it is a little, a little bit sticky. Uh, it should be, but I'm just going to flour the counter very slightly, a little flour over the top. We don't need to do the full 10 minute of kneading. This isn't a high gluten 
uh, bread. But you'll feel now, if you were making this, you will feel that this is quite gritty. It's got a, a, a lumpy texture to it. And we don't want that lumpy texture. We want the smoothness of a normal bread dough. And that takes between three and five minutes just to, to let it come in. You, most of the proving is going to happen uh, in the bowl. Okay? So we just use the heel of our hand. And you see that there? Just stretch it out. Stretch the, the dough out. Uh, a little bit of flour every now and again if it starts to feel too sticky. But we don't want it to be very dry because when this rises, the elasticity of the gluten will make it easier to handle anyway. Anna, you, uh, love in whoops, you love English muffins. You should try and bake them. Yeah, you should. You should try and bake them. Do you bake bread very often? Do people, do people bake bread? I'm sure a lot of people that watch the show do, do bake bread. Hi, Andrew. What's that? You, uh, great idea to measure the flour, especially in the humid weather. Yeah, I, I find a lot of people are saying to me, you know, what's the measurement in, in imperial and what's the measurement in metric? And I, I always give the pounds and grams measurements, but they seem to be asking me all the time for cups. And occasionally I use cups for flour very occasionally if it's super not important to have an accurate measurement. Uh, and I don't mind cups for sugar and milk and water. Obviously, that's a pretty standard uh, measurement. But when you're doing flour, if you give out cup measure, if you've ever followed a recipe that says three cups of flour, and then you wonder why your dough is brick hard or it's super wet, it's because when you take your cup and you put it into the flour, that compacts it, and that and some people will take the bag and pour it in, and that gives you very loosely packed flour. It can be up to thirty percent different in weight, and that's a, in three cups. That's a massive amount of flour, and it gives you very unequal um, and inconsistent recipes. So, do invest in a, in a pair of scales if you bake all the time. Obviously, if you bake frequently, you may actually be used to your cups and your measurements, and you're comfortable with it. Particularly when you're making pasta, you know, um, people use cups for pasta all the time. But but pasta is one of those things that if you if you don't get it right early on and it gets a little bit too tough, it's difficult to add liquid back into it. So you're better to start off with a slightly uh, moister pasta dough and um, and add a little bit of flour into it. And uh, yeah, for me, cup measurements don't uh, don't always work that great. Anyway, let's not go on about that. Seventeen viewers in the house. Good morning. Good welcome. Good day. Bienvenue. Ciao. Now that almost is ready. You see, it's getting a little smoother now. Won't have the elasticity of a of a bread dough. I'm just going to add a little bit of oil into here. Just a splash of oil back into the bowl that uh, I mixed in. And just to stop this from drying out, I'm going to put the bread in, the dough in there, flip it over, and then using some uh, plastic wrap, just go over the top of the bowl like that. For those of you that turned up a little bit later in the show, <laughs> I did have the jacket and everything on, but I needed to take it off to do the baking, otherwise I was gonna be covered in flour. We seal that, pop it somewhere warm, or like I was saying, if you want to make muffins and have them fresh in the morning, you can take this, and put it somewhere cool, and overnight, eight, nine, 10 hours, depending on how long you sleep, that will puff up beautifully, and in the morning, you can have these muffins ready within five or 10 minutes, fresh, English muffins, you can't beat them. So I'm gonna pop this somewhere warm. And then I'm gonna come back, enjoy my water martini. And in good Blue Peter fashion, you'll see this one here. You see how the 
and that's been pushed up. That I made this morning about a couple of hours ago and I've left it somewhere warm and the yeast is pushing that up. I'm gonna pull that out of there now. Are we ready to start making these? I suppose we are, aren't we? I don't wanna leave it too late. Now, look at that, how elastic that is. Beautiful. Let's just knock it down, bring it out onto our counter. Actually, I'm gonna put this onto a board because it's a little bit warmer. So I'll put it onto my my wooden board. Just pop that down there. Okay, on the board, we've knocked the air out of it. And I am going to divide this up. I would say this will make between 10 and 12. We'll go for 10 today, and I'll just cut this down the middle. Now, you could weigh this, but it probably isn't necessary. Um, Actually, I'm going to get eight today. Between, looking at the size, between eight and 10, I would say. I'm gonna divide this up into eight. It's a nice, even number. Okay, we've got eight pieces of beautiful dough. All we need to do now is just massage these round. You just cut your hands like this, massage them round, and you end up with these little round balls. Now, that one's a little smaller, so I probably would um, adjust them slightly. I'm just going to, you don't have to do it with two hands, you can just do one, cup it round. You're actually creating a little uh, elasticity around the bread. Now, yes, Tess, you love baking bread. There's nothing nicer than, um, than baking bread, fresh bread. Just round these off. Now, who's that? that Perry, Perry Gar 4 ik hello and welcome. That guy there is a little bit big. I'm just gonna take some of the dough off of there, and pop it on here and here. This one's a tiny bit big. I'm gonna distribute that over to that one. That one, I'm just gonna even them up a little bit. One quick roll just to get them back to shape. And that is it. You don't have to wait for these to reprove. Muffins are on the way. Next thing I'm going to move that bowl out of the way and I just want to um, pop the bread to the front there. Now, in good bond fashion, I spoke to Q this morning and asked him for some great gadgets. All he sent me was a blender a gas hob and a set of tongs. <laughs> so thank you, Q. I was hoping for a Maserati. It would have been nicer. But this will have to do. Now, on the front here, if you can get some nice cornmeal, that's a slightly coarse flour made from um, corn, get yourself a plate or tray. Pop a, a few tea, tablespoons on there because we want that characteristic texture of a muffin. We're just going to flatten that out. I'm just going to lay the muffins in, in the grain, get a couple of uh, like that. And we're just going to push them down, get that, get that little shape that we want. Hey, rock stars in the house. Just saw your name pop up. Do I know how to tie a bow tie? Yes, I do. I, I had it tied this morning. It's not too difficult. I can't, I'm not going to do it with my hands now, all covered in flour and grease. It's similar to a tie, over and under. You pull up the bow, go round through the back. It's a bit tricky, Rockstar. There's lots of, um, lots of people that will, will demonstrate that to you if you need. That's the beauty of, uh, of YouTube, isn't it? You can, anything you want to do. Many years ago, I used to have to dress in a suit and tie and things all the time. I don't tend to wear it uh, as often as I used to. So we've just coated those. I've turned them over both sides. They've both got that. Um, I better get this pan on. I'm using a skillet. You can use a griddle. You can use a barbecue even. We're just going to turn that on and get this metal surface nice and hot.
hot. Um, not actually, not nice and hot. We're going to get it modest, moderately hot because I don't want it super hot. Otherwise, we're going to burn the muffins. We don't want them burned. So the medium heat. Anna, what is that you saying there? You've um, just made pizza bread with pizza stuff inside last Saturday. Yeah, when you're baking, when you're making bread, Anna, time flies. You know that um, if you put it into your KitchenAid and set it going, all you're going to do is is go and sit down and watch some telly or something. I mean, if you sit at the counter and you make that dough with your hands, there's a lot more satisfaction. It's only about 10 minutes, and there's a lot more satisfaction, I find, from doing that and uh, a little bit of exercise. What am I making, Karen? I am making English muffins, fresh English muffins. If you haven't, um, if you're joining the show a little bit late today, you might have to go back to YouTube, watch the whole thing through if you want to see it, how I've made these English muffins. Now, I'm just going to take that... Um, little muffin there and I'm going to pop it in my pan just lay it down on the pan I'm going to set my timer over here because I want about 10 minutes in total a little bit under 10 minutes probably to be honest so let's pop that one next to it I can probably get four in this pan quite comfortably so that's eight English muffins I've made I'll do them in two batches Hey, Rockstar, do you ever wear a bow tie? <laughs> and I've got to get this, uh, this uh, sound cable all tucked in as well, which is not something you'd normally have to do. So when they are in there, I would say about four minutes, and I'll show you what we're looking for. Let's just move that over to the side a little bit. Now, do I want to be getting my eggs on or anything? Or you could almost start poaching your eggs, uh, making your hollandaise sauce. Now, the hollandaise sauce I'm going to make is super fast. I'm going to be doing it in a blender. I'll wait until these uh, muffins are done, actually, and then I can explain to you. M is giving me uh, comments saying, let's move this out of the way. Actually, I can move this out of the way now. We've got four more there that we can do later. Doesn't matter, it's hugely. Pop that over there. And I'll move this back in the center. So how are we doing for time? We're a couple of minutes in. You'll feel, if you get a little set of tongs, these should move beautifully in the pan. Now, I'm not doing that, uh, but don't move, don't be, don't be tempted to move them too early. You can put a little oil in your griddle, or if you've, um, if you're using a regular frying pan, a little oil, but keep it very light. You don't want greasy uh, muffins. I never put oil in there because I think um, I'm just going to turn my heat down a little bit. Uh, I think they're better without any oil on them. Now you'll feel. This is a little bit like baking bread on an open fire. If, if you've seen my uh, simple Indian flatbreads that I make, very similar technique. Um, but the yeast in there now is being attacked from underneath. The heat is going up. All the little air bubbles, and we should have, hopefully, God, lots of messages have just come up. <laughs> Good, because I can answer some questions whilst these warm up. Uh, Fian, Fian, Fian Ma, Fian Ma. First time you watch the show live from Germany. Welcome. <laughs> guten Morgen or Guten Abend in Germany. I probably uh, Guten Abend. I think um, it's quite late in Germany. So thank you for joining me and thank you for staying up to watch the show. Hi, Emily. Welcome. Looking sharp. I am now. I've actually uh, undressed a little bit. I had the jacket and I had the, I don't want to get flour all over my bow tie, but I had the bow tie done up as well earlier on. Rockstar, never worn a real bow tie, just the clip-on ones. Clip-on ones are cool. 
you know, if you need something, I've got a, a few uh, fancy colored clip-on ones that I've worn to parties and things, a little tartan one, I think. But the, the tie sort are not difficult to make. Now, I want four minutes. I should have got one of you guys to time it. We're coming about 20 seconds to go, and I think it doesn't matter. You can, you can get a feel. If we turn this, can you see the underside of that one? It's just starting to brown. That's not ready yet. A little bit longer. We're effectively baking bread in a pan. Zach, Zach Sutton, good day, mate. How are you? From the other side of the world. Now, Zach, you've got a bow tie on in your picture, haven't you? Now, that one is probably burning up a little bit, but that's okay. We don't mind. You'll notice with a proper English muffin, there's got the characteristic flat bottom, and the brown on the top is usually a little bit smaller uh, because as the muffin rises, you get this sort of mound, and then when you turn it over, I'm actually probably going to turn these ones now because I can see a little wisp of smoke. See the bottom of that? That's about perfect. Let's turn it over. Take another one. Oh, that one's just starting to blacken up a little bit, which is good for me. I like that. I think probably people that uh, have watched the show before know I like a little bit of burning on my bread. But, uh, okay, can you see the four of them in there now? They've got a very characteristic sort of hollow tap to them virtually ready we're going to put three to four minutes depending on the heat of your your pan three to four minutes just make sure my pan has stayed on i think it's actually turned off let's just get that going again three to four minutes on this side and these are going to be ready you can let them cool down with a muffin you don't cut them i saw a video of somebody um making a Eggs Benedict. Today we are making Eggs Royale, by the way, not Eggs Benedict. I, I know Bond tends to be attributed to eating Eggs Benedict, but uh, I think he would have preferred my Eggs Royale, which means we're going to be using some smoked salmon rather than uh, crispy bacon in there. Uh, but you could certainly do this with a little bit of bacon. But if you're like me and you like a bit of smoked salmon, that's the way I would make them. Now, these are cooking quite quickly. This little gas hob that I'm using here doesn't have a great tolerance. I would say um, be a little careful. I might even bring that up a little bit. Um, don't have it too, too hot because it will... No, no, it's coming along beautifully. So there's some comments in the comment uh, uh, Q&A app. Um, Steve, aren't you going to uh, to cut the muffins? I always thought the rise was better than the cut. When that's sweet K, you don't cut a good English muffin. You just puncture the side. You know when you get a, a stamp and it's got that. Well, maybe they don't nowadays, but uh, the little perforated dots. You take a fork and you make some little perforations around, and it should just tear open. And that way you don't you you get all that lovely texture in the muffin that'll absorb all the flavors. It looks beautiful. <laughs> I'm saying this. I've really uh, pushed out the boat a little bit today because I'm making two or three things that could quite easily go wrong. And I'd be very surprised if all three of them go perfectly. If these muffins come out and then my hollandaise sauce comes out and I manage to poach my egg, well, we'd be lucky. But anyway, I don't mind a challenge. And Sweet K is saying, you can't see this, this is on the uh, Q&A app. She's just back from a cake fair in Birmingham, probably at the big Birmingham. What's that big place at Birmingham called? Uh, you're loaded with goodies, currants, sultanas, marzipan, golden syrup, you name it. I think you're making a Christmas cake. <laughs> if you've got all that goodies, currants, sultanas, marzipan, golden syrup, hmm. Yes, get and make yourself. I've got a nice recipe for a Christmas cake that's moist. Uh, you start making it now, actually. If, you, if you're thinking of making Christmas cake or Christmas pudding, get and make it now. You need time to feed that cake. Now, you can either use a juice. I tend to use a, a 
a, a brandy uh, and just put holes in and feed the cake. There's a video on my channel. It explains how to do it. We are pretty much done. We're coming down to the last minute now. I turned that gas off, didn't I? So I slowed that down. Let me just show you the underside. So that is that side of the muffin. That is that side of the muffin. They're piping hot. I'm just gonna do, I'm doing it a little bit longer. Pardon me for that because I actually accidentally, I turned the gas off. Ah, oh dear. Mia, welcome to the channel. Yes, you have a look at it tomorrow, Mia, and get yourself to bed if it's getting too late. I, I really do appreciate a lot of people around the world are staying up very late to watch this show or getting up very early in the morning. Now, I'm a nighttime person. I'm not a morning person. So for me, getting up in the morning is always a bit of a pain, but I do get the best light in the kitchen in the morning, and that's the reason we do it. Actually, as the summer comes along, I might be able to do some later shows, but I'm not sure... Um, how that uh, will suit everybody. I'm going to actually turn this off now because I'm comfortable these are done. So you can feel they're fairly light. They're nice and hollow sounding both sides. I'm just going to get myself a plate. Actually, I'll get a plate here. Which one shall I have for serving? Now, probably I should use this one because it's prettiest and most elegant. This is the one I'd probably go for because it's got a little bit of burning on the top. There goes my beeper. Let us take these guys. Oh. I haven't had a lot of time to prepare for this, so I'm grabbing things as I go. Do you see those? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take a photograph. I actually might take a photograph of them in the pan and I will pop it up on Google Plus or Instagram. Let's just uh, switch this on so you can see them. Hopefully they'll come out good. Little photograph of you guys. Everybody smile, big smile. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's get a photo of those to go up and possibly a photograph a little bit later on. Come on, get those muffins out of there. Pop that over there, take the pan, pop it out of the way. Oh, that's hot. Take the gas stove, I don't think I need that anymore. I'm just gonna pop it down out of the way. We've got a pretty little English muffin there. We are going to make a sauce now. Bring in Q's gadget, the blender. Now, to make a hollandaise sauce super fast oh yeah, normally you do this over a double boiler and you're mixing your your um, tempering the eggs and you are mixing them it's a lot of work the eggs can split this is a fail safe we have got three egg yolks in there can you see just three egg yolks i'm going to pop those in to my blender you want a blender because we want a fast speed mixing. You can't really do this in a, uh, you might be able to do it in a food processor. Um, I've got some uh, vinegar here, it's tarragon vinegar. It's got a little bit of tarragon inside. I'm just gonna pop a splash of that in there, not much. The vinegar adds a distinct flavor, but you could use any white wine vinegar would be fine. Yes, and uh, the fork splitting does create all those nooks and crannies, which is great. It looks fantastic, um, and you'll see that hopefully in a minute. Hopefully when I, when I do it, it's not just going to be raw dough inside. It shouldn't be. So I've got a little bit of lemon in here as well. I've got a fresh lemon, a fresh lemon as opposed to a not fresh lemon. Actually, this lemon's just a little over fresh. Oh, got a lot of seeds in this one, so I'm just going to put a squirt in there. But it's lovely to have that zestiness of the lemon juice. Just catch those seeds, pop that to the side, get my little hand towel here, clean off. The next thing we want to do is take butter. I've got some butter that I pre-melted here. Now, this is about... Uh, four ounces, 
about 100 grams of butter. I think in, in the US, is that a stick of butter? And I'm just going to warm it again in the microwave because I want this hot enough to temper my eggs. Not super hot, by the way, but just warm. So another uh, 20 seconds, maybe. Okay. Oh, cayenne pepper. I haven't got that ready. Just put some cayenne pepper in a bowl. I'll get M to do that for me. Traditional to have all of it. Traditional to have a little cayenne pepper in there as well. I just take a little pinch, pop that in there, a little extra edge of heat. Let's pop the lid on here now, put the power on, and I'm just going to blend this. So, now everything's brought together in there. We've got our warm or hot butter. Turn that on, take the center out of your mixer. I hope you can hear me. And I'm gently gonna pour that in very slowly, by the way, not, not too quickly. Now pour that in there. Now I like to um, I like to put the butter fat in as well. Some people use clarified butter, but I actually like the butter fat in there. Hopefully this is going to come together nicely. We'll just speed that up a little bit. Pop that back on. A little noisy. And there we have a beautiful hollandaise sauce. Now, I'm just going to pop this some of this you see that it's it almost looks like a a thick custard and the taste i'm just going to season this with a little bit of white pepper and some salt now obviously if you're doing this at home you would um scrape that bowl out but i'm not oh look got that a bit messy didn't i dear me steve you've made a right mess you see, that's the difference between doing a live show. A lot of you that uh, have got channels yourself maybe will know. Uh, I'm just going to show you that. Look how that coats the back of that spoon there. It's perfectly coated, like a very thick custard. Now, I just tasted it. it. Tastes absolutely fantastic. But I want to add a little extra seasoning in there. So I've got a little fleur de sal, a little bit of salt of any sort, really pinch in there. We need to get and poach an egg, by the way. Now, I'm going to do it on the stove behind me today because that little hob, the little gas hob I was using, I've got my little sound pack on the back, little gas hob that I was using uh, doesn't go down low enough to poach an egg. And when you're poaching eggs, you don't want that water boiling and rolling. Now, some white pepper, a little bit of white pepper, just a twist or two in there. You could add a little extra cayenne pepper in, but this is already quite spicy. Just gonna mix that through. I'm gonna let that sit. You do want your hollandaise sauce uh, warm. So if you wanted to, you'd serve this straight away, but I'm just gonna let that sit a little while because I haven't got an egg at the moment. What I'm going to do is just get a fork. and Let's do the reveal on this pretty you've seen these in mcdonald's by the way <laughs> and they are not the same thing oh they're similar but this you couldn't do this with a mcdonald's i'm just going to take my fork and i'm just going to puncture around the outside of this little muffin i'm going to go all the way around because i really like the effect and here we go for the big reveal pull that open see the way that just pulls apart can you see in there all the steam coming out. You might not be able to see the steam, but there's a beautiful steam coming out of there. And we've got all that texture in that we spoke about. Anna's just put up um, that 100 grams of butter is about seven uh, tablespoons, uh, just under a stick. Okay, but a stick would be fine. A little extra butter is better. That's what's um, emulsifying. So less butter is actually uh, not what you want. You want um, a little more butter if need be. Now, I've got to, um, I've got some water in a pot here. 
I will just bring it over to show you. Got a little bit of water, probably about four inches, three or four inches of water. I'm bringing that up to a boil and I'm going to add a little salt to season the egg. Um, a little bit of vinegar just to help um, the egg white set. Now, here's some interesting things about eggs. Fresh eggs, when I used to have my farm, we used to have fresh eggs. When you crack an egg open that's fresh, the, the white in the egg is, is very um, viscous. It sticks around the egg yolk beautifully. When you uh, get eggs that are a little bit older, they're very watery. The egg whites become very watery. And why you get all that flotsam and jetsam floating around in your um, eggs is because of that watery. It will never really bond. So the fresher your eggs are, I need a little whisk here. So the fresher your eggs are, the more likely they'll bond together. If these were farm fresh eggs, I wouldn't mix this around. You usually cause a little vortex that draws the whites into the center. When I used to have farm fresh eggs, I just used to break them gently into uh, non-simmering, but water that's um, just below the boil. And about three or four minutes, your eggs are perfectly done. Uh, but with these slightly older, these aren't old, old eggs. These are free range good eggs, but I still find there's a little bit of that uh, water in there that causes them. I'll actually crack this open just to, just to show you. So just if you tip that to the side, you'd see a slightly watery uh, substance come off where the egg whites have aged. And that's what we, 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 we would avoid with fresher eggs. Partien, it's, it's weird, <laughs> weird not seeing me in the chef jacket. As I was saying before, if the, um, if the postie turned up today, uh, I'd be going to the door and he'd wonder what on earth's going on because occasionally he does turn up when I'm filming and I don't bother taking the coat off and he'd see me in all my different bright colored jackets. And today he'd think, God, what's going on? If I'd gone earlier when I had the bow tie tied up and the jacket on, <laughs> he would find, yes, Andrea, that, that I you're saying they're beautiful. I hope you mean those English muffins. They do look fantastic. I need eggs royale. I need some smoked salmon. Just one second. Got to find it in the fridge, in the fridge, in the fridge. Now, I would normally have bought this out earlier, but I forgot and just let it come up to room temperature. So it's a little bit chilled. I'm using smoked salmon because I love smoked salmon and that's what makes this uh an an eggs royale as opposed to an eggs benedict is the addition of a little smoked salmon which we're just going to lay across the top of our english muffins like so now hopefully the water behind me is starting to um come up to the boil it's going to turn this light on it might affect visibility. Now, I'm sorry I'm not really showing the uh, poached egg very well. I can't do it on the on the little stove top in front of the camera because it's too fierce. You don't want that water boiling. It'll pop and break your egg up into pieces. You want it below boiling. And uh, my camera is uh, is, yeah, it's a good, it's a nice camera. It, it's a, a 70D, it's, it's for filming because it has very good tracking on the filming. If anyone wants a good camera for filming, that is the one to go for. <clears throat> Edgar from Mexico, welcome to the show. Mexico is, is a place I haven't been yet and I, I really think there's a good chance we might go there in the next year or so and maybe do a little bit of cooking over there. Um, I'd love to do these live shows in uh, certain parts of the world where I can meet with people and we can do a little bit of live cooking. That would be heaps of fun. Paleo, Emily, Paleo uh, recipes. Get across to Anne, easy, gluten-free. She's got some great paleo recipes. I, I'm, I'm not, there's so many different um, eating habits that people have and different ways it's hard for me to know i reckon there probably are recipes i should probably try and work out which ones are paleo friendly um i'm not the person to go for for you know 
not skinny skinny. I'm not the one to go for for healthy eating and things because I'm not big into uh, uh, those sort of issues. I can pretty much eat anything. <laughs> and uh, um, But yeah, I, I appreciate where you're coming from. They're quite a popular. And Easy Gluten Free, she's got some stuff. I must have Anne on the show one day. Anne, do you reckon you'd come on the show and do a little bit of uh, moderating there? Now, my water is just starting to bubble here. So I'm getting little bubbles coming up. I don't want those bubbles. Don't want the bubbles when you're doing a poached egg. I'm going to add this egg in. First of all, I'm just going to get a whisk. I'm going to get a little vortex. Now we're in Australia, so we always go anti-clockwise, otherwise it'll stop. And then I'm just gonna gently drop that egg into the water. And hopefully, the hollandaise sauce has gone well, the muffins have gone well, let's hope the poached egg goes well as well. Otherwise I'm gonna have an ugly poached egg. Let me just do a five minute timer. I'm only gonna actually be uh, cooking this for just about three minutes. Tess, have I used a, a bread stone? Bread stone. Do you mean like a, a pizza stone in, in the oven? I do use that when I'm doing, um, um, sometimes when I'm doing sourdough breads, I'll use a, a pizza, like a, a baking stone. Is that what you mean? Or are you talking about like a Dutch oven? Or are you talking about a big stone? I have seen people cooking with big stones. So look at that. We've got some smoked salmon there laying on that. I want a nice matching with the kitchen equipment, knife and fork, pop that down there. Do you know what I would have? I'm very tempted, I don't know if anyone else would, a few capers, but I'm not going to do that today. A few capers on there as well would be delicious. 24 people are in the house. Welcome to every one of you. We have been cooking up fresh English muffins today. We've done them from scratch. I've showed you how to make the dough. I've shown you how to let it prove how you can do it overnight if you want to. So go back and watch the whole thing. If you get chance, you can make your own beautiful fresh muffins like this one, which will just tear open and give you this wonderful uh, breakfast. You can make these overnight. Cat, uh, cat, dog, <laughs> cat, I'm going to call you cat. Cat, Welcome to the show from Trinidad. Oh, beautiful. There's another part of the world that I want to go. Gosh, I've got to get my traveling hat on and go traveling again and, and, and meet some people. That would be such good fun. Now, how is that egg coming? Oh, it's looking pretty. It's looking pretty. I'm not, I've got the two cameras, but I'm not going to use the other camera today because it wouldn't be able to show you anyway. Um, I'm going to lift that egg out with a little slotted spoon, let it drain, pop it on here, and then see... Yes, beast of trail, troll, troll. I should have got the hitchhikers uh, reference because I, I'm a, I used to be a big hitchhikers uh, fan. Um, hence, I got the Babelfish in this ear, so I can hear what all of you are saying. Um, yeah, I'd end up with a, a drop soup. Yeah, if the water is so you would end up with a drop soup. You want that gentle simmer. I, I think I'll bring it over to the camera in a moment and just let you see how that's developed. How long have we been going? We are coming up to three minutes for a beautiful soft poached egg. You can take it out anywhere from three minutes to four minutes and you are going to get an egg when you cut through it. Actually, I'm gonna move one of these muffins out of the way because I've only got one egg. Pop that one in the center. Take a little photograph of it. Now, time to make my coffee. I am going to put the coffee on. I'm only gonna have a little shot today. Always make my coffee, somebody's got to remind me. The NEC in Birmingham, of course it was Sweet K. You won't see that message on there. Sweet K went up to the NEC in Birmingham and stole all of their currants, raisins, marzipans, sultanas, and everything else. Lucky her. I'm saying lucky her. It could be a he. I'm not sure. Let's get that uh, coffee on. I've ground it up early. My egg is very, very nearly ready. Actually, I would say that is good. Now, if I can bring that over and uh, let me show you. Uh, 
Let's bring the other camera on because I, I probably need to show this on the other camera. The only reason I don't put the other camera on, as soon as we do that, my comments go translucent, but I need it on. Can you see the way that egg is sat in the center there now? We'll leave that camera on for the time being. I'm going to lift that out. Now you could put that onto a, um, onto a little cloth to drain, but I'm not gonna be too, uh, too fancy about this, but can you see how beautiful? There's my poached egg. Now what's gonna take this up another level? I'm just gonna drop that pretty little egg on there and hopefully we're not going to, um, wow, look at that. See the steam rising on there. Now the only thing that can make this one step better is to take this hollandaise sauce, this beautiful custardy sauce. It's cooled down a little bit, but the egg will warm it back up. And what I'll do is I'll bring that up to camera, and hopefully you'll see. Doesn't matter if I drip a little bit. Oh, we're gonna coat that egg. Oh, would the timer go off at the time? Turn that beeper off. We are going to coat that egg completely over with the hollandaise sauce. And if you wanted to, you could sprinkle, look at that. Is that showing up nicely? Now, I'm gonna take my knife here. Now actually, I'm gonna take a photograph and I will show you. I'll pop these photographs up if I can on Instagram. Keep on the low camera. Keep on the low camera, click, click say. So uh, let's just see if we can get a picture of that. Now, if you guys can all smile in the background, hopefully you'll be there as well. Get a couple of photographs of that. They're probably not gonna be super. If I, if I get a good one, I will put it up on Instagram. Let's get the other camera back up there. Any comments coming through? You wanna see this cut through? Let's get the other camera. Here we go. Just gonna take that knife, and if I draw that through there, look. Look at that. Perfect eggs royale. Yum, 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 yum. Oh, now I want to eat it, and every time I want to eat it, I've got my cocktail here. Glass of water, by the way. If you want to make a, a martini, it really is just a little bit of gin. I think it's one shot of gin, one shot of vodka, and one shot of, two shots of gin, one shot of vodka, and a shot of Lillette, uh, which is an aperitif wine from France. Beautiful, delicious wine, by the way. Uh, I used to live in France. Okay, I'm gonna pop a shot of coffee in some warm milk. Oh. Look at that. So let's get my coffee ready. Get my knife and fork. Or as my Scottish friends say, my fork and knife. Cheers. Got a lovely coffee there. Now let's go and just check some of these comments. Rockstar, you'd really love to taste these muffins. You see how the uh, the messages go transparent after I use that other camera? And that's why I haven't been using it. Well, you can. They're easy, easy, easy to make. You've watched the video now. Get and make some tonight. If you've got time, mix up a little dough. Follow those instructions. Let it rise overnight. Tomorrow morning, you can enjoy them. Pardon me. <laughs> Yes, Anna, you can have them tomorrow. Anyone can have these tomorrow if they've got a little time tonight. I'm a left-hander when eating. I'm a right-hander when anything else. So I'm gonna take a little slice off of here, little slice. If you wanted, you could put a little bit of um, cayenne pepper, but I think my cayenne pepper, oh, here we go. This is what Bond would be eating. He wouldn't be eating this with a um, with bacon. He would be having this with smoked 
salmon for sure. Mm. Oh, I waited for breakfast. It was worth the wait. Mm. Yum, 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 yum. Got my espresso, a little bit of milk in the morning, a little bit of milk. No sugar. Yum, yum, yum. Fragile imagination from Poland. Beautiful. Do get a make. If anyone gives this a try, I'd love to hear your comments, by the way. And if you take a picture of it and it comes out really well, if you, if you take a picture of it and it doesn't come out that well, send it across to me on any social media you like. By the way, a huge thanks, thank you, while I've got 27 people in the house now, to all of those that have got involved with the competition. I love every one of you, and I'm so sorry that I can't give something to everybody. Um, but I think this will be a beautiful present for some somebody. What we're probably going to do is have a live show near Christmas time. I'm going to take everybody's name. I'm going to get out my pen and quill, write them down on little strips of equally sized paper. I've been thinking about this. So even if your name's huge and long, equal sizes of paper. I'm going to pop those into some sort of uh, raffle and we're going to draw somebody out. And some lucky person is going to get a brand new KitchenAid. And, and look, if you're watching this and somebody said to me, do you have to pay for the postage? I think somebody wanted to know if they were going to have to pay for the postage. Of course not. No. No point in me giving a, a gift away and then asking people. Hmm? <laughs> M is telling me not to eat anymore. She says, if I eat more, I won't be able to talk. Hmm. She's wrong. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. How can I not eat that? That's delicious. And I haven't had breakfast, so I'm, I'm ready for it. We are coming up. Oh, we've gone over an hour. I'm sorry about that, everybody. I do try to keep the shows to an hour. Uh, my coffee is here now. I'm going to start to close down and end the show. If there's any comments that come through, Beast of Trail, thank you very much. Troll, thank you very much. I think I'm always going to say trail because of the uh, long A's, but I do remember the character from uh, Hitchhikers. Andrea, um, growing up in Toronto. Yes, so you used to have this as a, as a ch child from the British influences. Yeah, I, I don't know when I started. When I first had this, will you believe it? I was probably not in the UK. I probably first had this somewhere in Asia. And uh, I just love it. It's just possibly, it's, it's the hollandaise sauce that really does it. The hollandaise sauce with that lovely runny egg. Now, some people like their eggs really well cooked. You're missing out. A bit like an overcooked steak. You're missing out. Now, I'm not going to eat any more because I can't talk. Mmm, 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 mmm. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, Annie's just telling me she'll come on the channel, get across and tell her she's got to. But she's also saying I was wrong. She hasn't got lots of paleo recipes on her channel. But I think you might have one or two. And anyway, it doesn't matter. There are heaps out there. If you get a, a paleo, a really nice paleo recipe and you send it to me, I will do it. Okay. So um, was it Nicole? Who said that? It was Emily, was it? Emily, send me a, a, an idea, something that I can make that would be beautiful. Give paleos um, something that they, they can share with their friends. Um, now, don't drink your coffee anymore. Okay, Tess, thank you very much. Give this a try. Anybody that wants the most superb breakfast, make that dough. I've got another one there. I'll probably have some tomorrow as well. Thank you very much for joining me. Let's just check out the comment uh, app as well, just to see if there was uh, anything in there, uh, the Q&A app. See if there was many comments coming through. Good, no, most people seem to be commenting from uh, within Google+. Plus. That's working well. Am I looking at the camera all the time? I hope so. Love to every one of you from down under. Be good, and I will see you next time. Take care.